Hi, in this video I want to show you how to create a simple agent with Claude 3.7, the new reasoning model of Anthropic. I will first show you the basic interface of the new model and then we build the following agent. We first want to classify how difficult the question is. Based on the result we want to use Sonnet 3.7 with reasoning for hard questions and the less expensive model for easy questions. If you are interested in the code, you will find that in the description. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and as you can see, I'm in the Anthropic 3.7 Agent IPython Notebook. Very important, if you want to run that code, you need to put an Anthropic API key in the .n file. In the first line, we load that API key and if you can read it through, then this uh, worked as expected. In the next line, we load the chat Anthropic class from the Langchain Anthropic package. If you don't have it, then please run pip install Langchain minus an Anthropic to install that package. And now you should be able to import it. So first, what's the difference between the old models, the one-shot models like Haiku and the new models? So the new model allows us to define model quarks. And here we can define if you want to enable thinking or not. To enable thinking, you have to pass the thinking key inside the model quarks. And then here you have to define a dictionary with type enabled and also budget tokens. So the larger this value is, the more tokens the thinking process is allowed to generate. So let's create this LLM with reasoning. And then we want to ask the question for the LLM with reasoning, what is the root of 12? So let's ask that. And now we can see the following in the result. So this takes, of course, a little bit longer because this will first generate the thinking tokens. And as you can see, the response is this AI message. And normally inside content, we only have a string with the answer, but this is a little bit more complex. We've got this list with a signature. Here we've got thinking and we also got a text attribute. So to access the correct attributes, we have to do the following. So the thinking tokens are stored in the first item, so index zero, and then in the thinking key. So this is how it looks. These are the thinking tokens and that's the result created based on the thinking tokens. So this is in index one in that list and you then have to access the text key. So that's the final result of the LLM. And these are the thinking tokens. Okay, so this is how you can in general use the new reasoning model with Claude. Now let's create an agent. So for the agent, we need three different LLMs. We first need the LLM classifier. This will be the Claude 3.5 Haiku model. And then we use a regular LLM for medium hard questions and the thinking model with thinking enabled for very hard questions. So we want first the LLM classifier to classify the question as easy, medium, hard, and very hard. And then if the model identifies this as easy, then we want to use the regular LLM without thinking because this is of course less expensive. If the task is very hard, then we want to use the Claude 3.7 Sonnet with thinking enabled. Okay. So we created our models and then we can create our graph. So for the graph, we will use a very simple graph where we only store the messages and also the difficulty that the classifier LM suggests. So that's our difficulty state. And then we create our node function. So for the classification, we do the following. So we extract from the messages, the very last one, and from that, the content. So we get the question and then we use a system prompt. You are a difficulty classifier. Classify the user question into exactly one of these categories. Easy, mid, hard, and very hard. Only return a single word. And then we create our human prompt. We create a chat prompt template from that. And we use structured output where we pass in this difficulty grade. So this is what we want to return from the LLM. And then we are gonna store the result in the state object where we access the difficulty t uh, key. And then we return the complete state. So this is how we perform the classification. And then based on the classification result, so we access the difficulty again. If it's very hard, then we want to return a string called thinking and otherwise regular. And based on the string here, we want to route to the LLM with thinking and to the LLM without thinking. 
So let's execute that. And here we've got two call model methods. These are pretty similar. So we extract the user prompt from the state object, and then we pass that user prompt to the thinking model or to the regular model. So this depends on what the router returned. So let's create a node for regular and for thinking model. And then based on that, on all of that function, we can create our nodes. So for the classification, we want to use the classification difficulty function. For the thinking model, we want to use the call model thinking function. And for regular, we want to use the call model regular function, which we defined here. So now we've got our nodes. And we, of course, have to use that router function. So this is how we can use it. We can define a conditional edge, and you have to read it like the following. So from the classified difficulty node, we want to route based on the output of that function. So if the route based on difficulty returns thinking, then we want to route to the call model thinking node, which is this. Otherwise, if the string is regular, so again, this is what return thinking or regular, then we want to use the call model regular node. So this is how it works. And at the end, we want to route to an end node. So our workflow is finished. Then we can compile our graph and execute it. So first, I'm going to show you how it looks like. This is what you saw in the introduction. So we start as a start node, then we classify, we route to regular or thinking model, and then we route to the end node. So pretty simple, but this is how you could based on the difficulty of the question, route to different nodes. Okay, let's try it out. So the first question is, what is two plus two? I think this is a pretty easy question and the classifier model graded the question as easy. Okay, so the second question is, could you provide a detailed proof of Fermat's last theorem? To be honest, I have no idea what that actually is, but uh, ChatGPT told me that's a very difficult question. So let's see if Entropic sees it the same way. And this takes much longer. As you can see, this is quite fast. So this does not use reasoning, but in this case, it takes some time. Okay, so this took 12 seconds and we can now see that the difficulty was rated as very hard. So ChatGPT was actually correct. And here we can see that's the result, AI message, which is that list. And here we can see this is the thinking tokens. And here also is the content. So if you want to access the result, you could also do it like we did at the beginning. So we could pass or extract that from the agent state. So we could save that in result. And then we access the result like this. So this, that's not enough because we use an agent here. Okay, so I had to rerun it because I had to save it in result, of course. And now we can access it like this. So this is how it looks like. So result, and then we access messages. And then we access the first uh, index one because we want to access the AI message. And inside here, this looks like the following. We've got AI message. Then we access the content attribute. And inside here, we access the first key. And here we can see that we have to access the text key. So that's the result of our agent. So only a text. Okay, that's it. So great that Langref already integrated that into their library. So have fun with exploring the new cloud model. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.